Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation with complex numbers. So we have z cubed equals square root of z and we're going to be solving for z values. Now at this point you might be thinking what is so special about this equation? It's just a radical equation, right? Well, the one fact that makes it interesting is that we're looking for non-real solutions in addition to real solutions. And when I say non-real, I don't want to say complex because obviously non-real solutions are complex as well as real solutions are complex because complex numbers include real numbers. Okay, but most of the time when we say complex number, we mean a non-real number. Most of the time. So we have this equation, what are we going to do? Well, a typical method for these kinds of equations is square both sides. One thing we need to be careful about, and I'm not, I can't promise that I'll be careful about it all the time, is that uh, we have to think about the meaning of square root of z. When you think about it in the real world, so that the complex world and the real world agree on the same thing, there's something called the principal value, right? So whenever, for, exa for example, if I take the square root of 4, in the real world, you know that it's 2, right? And the square root of negative 4 does not exist in the real world. But in the complex world, 4 has 2 square roots, 2 and negative 2, because there are two numbers whose square equals. And as you know, every complex number besides 0 has 2 square roots. 3 cube roots, 4 fourth roots, so on and so forth. So there are n nth roots in general, right? So how do we make these two things agree? We kind of go by what's called the principal square root. And it would be the one with the positive positive right I mean for for real numbers that's the case but what if when you have something like let's say let me think of a number that has a good square root like 3 minus 4i right okay you can take the square root and you're gonna realize one of them is 2 minus i the other one is negative 2 plus i and you know what we're going to go by 2 minus i. And if you also use rule from alpha, you're going to be, I think it, it would be the one with a positive real part. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe the positive square root, uh, the, I mean the principal square root, I think should be on the right half plane. Okay? Anyways, so let's see how we can put it into practice and how do we solve this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and present two solutions. Let's start with the one that is uh, kind of maybe a little less trivial. So we're going to use substitution, okay? Let's go ahead and call this W. So this gives us two things. Square root of Z is W and Z cubed is W. So that's kind of like a um, weird way to express it because if you say that, okay, Z cubed is W, from here it implies that Z is the cube root of w but then if you go ahead and plug it in here you're gonna get the six root. you don't want that i want to keep it like with um, i want to keep it outside radicals so here's what i'm going to do instead if square root of z is w then i'm going to square both sides and get z equals w squared you got to be careful about this again because when you square both sides you introduce extraneous solutions you, so you kind of need to check at the end and I'll probably leave it for you to check <laughs> because I'm lazy most of the time, right? So z equals w squared. Let's go ahead and plug it in right here, okay? Replace z with w squared. You're going to get w squared to the power 3 equals w. So basically, I got rid of z completely. And now I have w to the 6th power equals w. Don't divide by w because, you, again, like I said earlier, you're going to lose solutions. But you could also consider the following. All right, I know that w equals 0 is a solution, which implies z equals 0 is a solution, right? If you plug it in, you, you're going to see that it checks. So I can say, okay, z equals 0 is a solution. Now assume that z does not equal 0, which means w does not equal 0, right? Contrapositive, something like that. So let's just go ahead and say, okay, I want to divide by w, so it's going to give me w to the fifth equals 1, and we're assuming that w does not equal 0 anymore, because we already covered that case, okay? Now we get something interesting, the fifth roots of unity, beautiful, right? How do you find the fifth roots of unity? You can go ahead and replace the one with e to the power 2 pi ni, and raise both sides to the power 1 fifth, 
which should give you the answer, right? And then that gives you, by the way, n is an integer here. I forgot to say that, but it's always like that. So w becomes e to the power 2 pi ni divided by 5. And of course, you can replace n with 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You only need five values, by the way, because when you hit the next value like if n is equal to 5 you're going to go back to uh, the same thing as n equals 1 makes sense so it's just going to repeat it's a cycle cool now if you replace n with 0 you get w equals e to the 0 which is 1 right and then um, so 1 is a solution right and w equals 1 implies what w equals 1 implies that z is equal to 1 because z is w squared z is w squared so this means z is 1 is 1 a solution absolutely and absolute wise too because if you think about it if z is 1 then 1 cubed is square root of 1 the problem is when i say the square root of 1 it has two square roots but if you go with the principal value yes it should work right okay so that's the type of check we need to do at every so that's the type of check we need to do at every corner. Okay, let's proceed with the rest. So what happens if n is equal to 1, then you get w equals e to the power 2 pi i over 5. If you consider the value of 2 pi over 5, you can write it as cosine 2 pi over 5. I think that's 72 degrees root 5 hmm, minus 1 over 4, I think, something like that. If I remember correctly. I think this one is going to be like root 5 minus 1 over 4 and this one should be something like root 5 plus 1 over 4 or something like that. Anyways, you get the idea. I can always write in standard form if I know these trigonometric values and we do know them from a regular pentagon or some other idea. There is a special triangle with the 72, 72, 36 and you can kind of split it up like isosceles-ly in an isosceles way and then you'll just go from there. Okay. Uh, it takes some effort, but or you just memorize it. If hopefully these are correct, but you get the idea. From here, I get the w values, and by replacing, but then I still need to find the z values. What is z? Z is w squared. So anything like this must be squared, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that in the general form. Z is w squared, and w is e to the power two pi n i over five. If I square it, I'm going to be getting e to the power four pi n i over five. So here's the million dollar question. Are all these solutions going to work? And that's for you to find out. Are there any limitations? How about the principal value? So on and so forth. Okay. So let me go ahead and show you the second approach. You probably guessed it if you said square both sides, right? It's kind of like this. That's basically what is typical, right? Square both sides. And when you do you're going to get z to the 6 equals z. And then from here, again, z equals 0 is the solution. And then if z does not equal 0, then you can divide by z and then consider the fifth roots of unity. Wait a minute. From here, we get interesting results because you know what? When you write this as e to the power, let's say, 2 pi k, let's just use a different integer this time. Again, k is an integer. But when you get z here, e to the power 2 pi k i over 5. So that kind of didn't agree with what I found here. Take a look. I got 4 pi n over n i over 5, but this gives me 2 pi k i over 5. So why do we have a difference? Where does that come from? Does that have anything to do with the principal value? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.